Why is Kerbal Space Program 2? Hello everybody and welcome! It has been two years since Kerbal Space Program 2 was announced. The news that the beloved space game would get a sequel generated a massive hype, but two years later we're still waiting for any real tangible gameplay. Sure, there have been a lot of tidbits every few weeks from short show and tell video clips to developer diaries detailing parts of the process of creating the game. But we have yet to really experience the game for ourselves, or even see a controlled demo of it. You know what else happened almost exactly two years ago? SpaceX made a stubby water tower fly. Two years later, they are getting close to launching the largest, most powerful rocket in history with Starship and the Super Heavy Booster. Hold that thought, we'll get back to it later. After all this time, what do we really know about Kerbal Space Program 2? This video is part 2 of my two years later mini-series about the upcoming game. In the first part, I have highlighted a few new features that we have learned and what their potential impact on gameplay might be. A link to that and to previous videos I made in that vein are down in the description, so go check those out. This video is more of a deep dive into what it means to follow a clear vision for a product, or anything for that matter, and whether or not KSP2 is following one and what that means for its scope and release date. As I hinted at in the previous video, Kerbal Space Program 2 is going to be on a completely different scale than the original. But all of the additional features and new things to explore increase the complexity of the project. And with increased complexity in any project, there is always the danger that the people involved lose sight of the real goal they want to achieve, provided it is clearly defined. And here we come back to the comparison with SpaceX. Starship has transformed from a stubby water tower to an actual flight article the size of the Tower of Pisa, performing belly flop maneuvers and a successful landing. Similarly remarkable, a few tents in a field in Boca Chica, Texas have transformed into what is now called Starbase, featuring a massive launch tower and construction facilities. Granted, SpaceX has a lot more manpower and funds for its Starship program than the development team could ever dream to get for Kerbal Space Program 2. But one has to wonder, is the goal for the game as clearly defined as it is for Starship? Elon Musk is on a mission he laid out back when the thing was called Interplanetary Transport System. Become a space-bearing civilization and a multi-planet species. Starship is merely a tool to facilitate this goal. And every design decision in the creation and production of the rocket is made based on whether or not Starship brings them closer to that goal. I highly recommend you watch Everyday Astronaut's three-part Starbase tour, where Elon Musk himself details his approach to the design and development, especially where he explains that removing things that you don't really need is often more valuable than adding something. Possibly the most common error of a smart engineer is to optimize a thing that should not exist. If you ever worked in software development, you can clearly recognize how SpaceX tries to apply a modern principle from that field to every aspect of how Starship comes together. So, what is the vision for Kerbal Space Program 2? So far we heard a lot of features, interstellar travel, multiplayer, new planets and technology. And we know the developers want to make the game more accessible without sacrificing complexity. But all of these are tactical approaches, mere features, solutions to problems. Finding answers is one thing, asking the right question is another. Douglas Adams got that one right. There are three layers to any successful product, and I'm using the term product very loosely here, which are designed to answer three questions. Why do you do what you do? What do you want to achieve? And how do you want to achieve it? First, 
have a mission statement people can rally behind. This needs to be an overarching principle that will still hold true years or decades later. This is the why. Second, have a clear vision what you want to achieve with your product. Usually these are long-term goals, we're talking multiple years here, and you have to formulate new ones once you reach them. This is the what. Third, formulate a strategy to outline how you want to achieve the goals of your vision. You will have to keep a close eye on this. Your strategy has to be regularly inspected to see if it is still suited for that purpose. If it no longer is, you have to adapt your strategy. This is the how. We can easily map SpaceX and Starship to these three layers. Make life multiplanetary is a clear mission statement. The vision is create infrastructure to make space travel cheaper and easier. We have to figure out how to improve the cost of trips to Mars by 5 million percent. Remember, Starship was originally called the Interplanetary Transport System, with system being the operative word, and Elon Musk has repeatedly referred to Starship as a system. And finally, the development of Starship is the how. The result of the strategy Elon and SpaceX have implemented to reach these goals. I am sure that the answers to why, what and how all exist internally within the KSP2 development team. But I'd like to see them communicated better. Tell us, why is Kerbal Space Program 2? The closest we ever got to publicly hear something resembling a vision was when senior game designer Tom Vinita said We could get an entire generation of people, like, stoked about space. Let's get the could out of there and refine that a little into a potential mission statement. Open space up for everyone. This is a valid statement whether or not you produce a game, write a book or make a movie. And it is something I would reckon will still be valid in decades to come. Now to the vision. I'm paraphrasing Tom now. Get the next generation of explorers excited for space. Another could be make space less intimidating. Or to take something Scott Manley said about the original game, create a gateway drug to physics. As for strategy, this is the game itself. Kerbal Space Program 2 is the vehicle to reach these goals, to fulfill the vision, to accomplish the mission. Well, of course the development team is part of a large corporation, so the mission statement on that side of things almost always is get rich, the vision is create the highest possible revenue with the least possible cost, and the strategy is selling and marketing games. Sounds a lot less progressive when you put it that way. Anyways, what I'm trying to get at is this. Kerbal Space Program 2 as a game in and of itself could potentially never be finished. The same way the universe is expanding, so could be playable features. Why not add pulsars or black holes? You could introduce a nebula where you have to use aerodynamic vehicles or else you could suffer drag even when in zero gravity. In a sheer endless universe, the potential for features is also never ending. But many features alone do not make a great game. The question is, do all of these features really contribute to the mission? Now that we have direct access to the resources of Private Division, we can pursue a more ambitious vision for the game. Adding stuff is easy. Deciding on what is essential and what to remove is hard. Very hard. As someone who has done his fair share of large software projects, I am speaking from experience here. Same goes for creative work. One of the hardest things for a creator in any genre to do is to finish a piece instead of continuing to add to it and keep refining it. Your worst creation is the one you never release. And here we finally address the elephant in the room. We have had many delays regarding the, admittedly very optimistic, initial release date of Kerbal Space Program 2. It is now slated to come out in 2022, probably in the latter half. And sure, the fans are patient, they prefer waiting for the game to be right to a rushed out bad experience. But it has to be finished at one point, 
instead of piling more and more stuff onto it. The original KSP wowed people with just a handful of parts and far less complexity than it offers nowadays, let alone what is proposed for the sequel. If the development team has successfully answered why they are doing this game, what they want to achieve and how they want to achieve that, then I believe they will be able to focus on what is really essential for their vision to succeed. Provided there isn't the next global disaster waiting around the corner, if they do less to achieve more, then we won't have another delay. Because at the end of the day, no matter how many renders or test scenes we get, working software is the primary measure of progress. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.